It's 7.07. I'm Daedalus Howell. We have Deborah Fudge with us. She's the vice mayor of the town of Windsor. The town, not the city. I've learned that. Why is it a town and not a city? Well, when we were incorporated 22 years ago, we purposely named ourselves a town so that we would keep our small town character and not become a big city like Roner Park or Santa Rosa. But what if you grow and then you still call the town? It's going to look silly. It yeah. already looks silly. Yeah. We, have, we have twice the people of um, Healdsburg, really? three times the people of Sonoma, three times the people of Sebastopol, so they laugh at us, but that's okay. But you want to be a town. So. We want to be a town. To me, though, that, that signifies something. That's indicative of a desire to, to as you say, contain and remain in character, or, or preserve the character, I should say, of, of the town. Can you do that and still grow? That's the tricky part where we are now, because we've got 27,000 people, and but what we're concentrating on is how we grow and, and, how, and what we grow. So we concentrate on the downtown, and we put elements in there that are meant for the, the citizens, not for tourists. Right. We're redesigning our downtown right now in, in the Civic Center area, and we have three or four buildings there that would be just for the people who live there basically so we're not going to be oriented for tourists like like Healdsburg. I, I think that's super smart because Healdsburg is basically a tourist town now and its entire uh, culture is predicated around serving the interests, desires, and needs of tourists. And I think what happens after a while is the tourists tire of that, right? Um, they want the authentic thing. They want oh, what the point. real people, yeah. the real townies, yeah. you know, enjoy and all that. So it seems to me that's a wise choice to keep Windsor for Windsor people, Windsorians, I guess. Right. Whatever Windsor. you guys, whatever you call yourselves. <laughs> I don't know what we call ourselves. But that's funny. That's a tough one because you got Petalumans, Santa Rosans, Rona Parkians. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know what we are. That's a good point. I think as vice mayor. Windsorites. Windsorites. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the Windsorites, though, is, is there a sense of being a, a Windsorite? What does it mean? I know what it means to be a Sonoman. When you're a Sonoman, you're just an anti napin right? <laughs> right. When you're a Petaluman, you're anti everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of aspiring to be a Marinite, though. Yeah. <laughs> but a Windsorite, a Windsorite <laughs> I think we have to work on that one. <laughs> yeah, we have to work on that. Who is, who is that person? What is a Windsorite? A Windsorite is um, the average age is 45. You have two or three kids. 85% um, of you live in single-family homes that were mostly built before we were a town or before we incorporated. Um, it's a town that's really focused on families. We have events on the town green that are free, the free concerts in the summers. We have really good um, children's programs, and we try to offer programs for teens, but, you know, they don't want to do it. It's not cool. Right. We have really good preschool summer camps, and we really, our Parks and Rec Department really focuses on all that. And as we build our town, we're trying to build now different kind of housing so that millennials will come back and live and, and make us a cool town in the future and that, that older people can age in place. So now we're at the point where we're trying to get away from only single family homes and get some lofts and some cottages and just sort of balance it a little bit. The fatal mistake may be that uh, millennials are cool, are they? I think well, they're jerks. They... <laughs> <laughs> you know? I can't say that on air. I can. <laughs> Have you seen these guys? Jesus. Right? Some are. Yeah. But some of them are really creative, and you want yeah. them to come back and breathe energy into your town and, and create these cool, you know, entrepreneurial yeah. incubator things and, and maybe some cool more brew pubs and, yeah. no, I'm, I'm you with know, you. I mean, little, I'm, I'm, little businesses, I'm only startups. Half, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> but that's, that's part of the problem of the, or not problem, that's kind of the ritual of a small town is that the youth, the younger people leave, they go to school, they go wherever, and not a lot come back. And so there's this constant kind of draining. And I saw it happen firsthand in Petaluma in the 90s. And, oh. But Petaluma, though, is, is going through this resurgence, I think, in some ways, because a replacement demographic has come back, who are people about my age in their 40s, right, who, uh, when Mike is, I grew up in Petaluma, but a lot of people are just coming out of the cities, Oakland, San Francisco, yeah. that kind of thing. So are you looking to replace a, a population that's left, that's like, I'm too cool for Windsor because I grew up here, or do you want to retain the population you've got? We want to retain the population we have, and we want to make it so if people grew up in Windsor, they can afford to come back. And right. they might have to have a different kind of a lifestyle or a, a loft instead of a house on a quarter acre lot, but we want them to yeah. you know, be able to live there and come back and have the kind of housing that they want, which isn't really the quarter acre you know, lot yeah, anymore. I think you're right. I think they prefer a more urban style environment. Yeah. you know. Uh, so that means building up instead of out? We're building up in the downtown. Yeah. We're going up possibly four stories in the last remaining section. That's going to be the highest? 
Yeah, we haven't done five yet. Five, I think, would scare people. I'd hear about it if people if we did five stories. You'd probably see it, like you know. We'd from... see it. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, no, no, that's too tall. But so, but you're saying part of the character and vitality of the town is preserved by getting attracting young people. So that's beyond mm-hmm. just like affordable housing and cool housing. There's sort of the lifestyle that wants to go with that. Not least which being a job. Are there jobs for young people? Are there places for for us to work or them? I should say. Well, to work? <laughs> yeah. we have a Russian River Brewing Company coming. Oh, that's right. It's moving to you yeah. know that's not a lot of jobs, but there will be yeah. some jobs there. And we want them to come and create jobs. We want them to come and do startups Bring business and, and yeah. yeah, entrepreneurial type things and incubator type businesses so um, and we also want people that live there to be able to stay if they want to leave their bigger home and move into a cottage that's closer to downtown where they can walk to Oliver's or maybe a luxury apartment that's right. got an elevator they can walk and get their own groceries and things that's a that's a really we good want point that. so, yes yeah, so you have empty nesters who right. want to downscale yet you know they either own their homes or they're significantly paid off they're not paying a lot a month for these things how do they stay in Windsor you know, or any place in Sonoma County, when the rents are so high, how can you downscale and then pay more? Yeah, that's that's going to be the tricky how do you part. Fix that? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was <laughs> just thinking of the luxury apartment I was going to move them into, and I thought, wait, that's a thousand dollars more than their than their mortgage right now. Right. There was a time, like yeah. when, when my parents finally got rid of my brother and I, they moved to San Francisco because, you know, that's the thing to do, and they got an apartment, and it wasn't anything more. You yeah. Know, things have changed. Things right? have changed. And now people are coming from the city. Uh, because they can't afford to live there, and they're probably ending up, I know they're ending up in Petaluma, like, w- what if they go so far as Windsor, and they bring a whole different level of, you know, uh, expectation when it comes to rent. They're like 3000 bucks a month, nothing. It's cheaper yeah. for them, right? That will probably happen, and I don't have an answer for that. Yeah. I will say that I grew up in the Silicon Valley before it was the Silicon Valley. So you Valley. saw this happen. I saw it happen. Yeah. And, and the house that my parents built in 1957 was $11,000, 1,100 wow. square feet, and now... It's it's in the tree streets of Mountain View. Oh, so that's beautiful. That Mountain yeah. View is really cool. Yeah. That house is now like one point nine million dollars. It's insane. It's still an eleven hundred square foot house. What I'm afraid of is you you watch what's happening down there and what tract houses are worth two point seven million just for a tract house. My yeah. friend owns one of them, and I see those companies starting to move north. That's what I'm afraid of. I see Google looking at Marin, and if they look at Marin. And then we have the smart train. Yeah. At least people can ride the train, but they're going to start moving up here. And they can afford, they have more expendable income. Cloverdale is actually, once the train gets going, Cloverdale is looking to accept some of these people. I'm sure they are. Yeah. yeah. Clo- they, I was talking with the mayor about it. And so, I mean, do you guys all get together, like mayors and vice mayors, and, and talk about like the, how your cities are changing? We get together formally, but we also, a lot of us are friends, and we get yeah. together informally a lot. We call each other. You know, hey, Cloverdale, what are you doing? Healdsburg, what are you doing with that issue? Yeah. And then sometimes when it gets really hairy, some of us meet and go out for drinks. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> That's great. Can you believe? No. I mean, without without outing anyone or any particular issue, like, is, is there something that you can let us in on that you guys discuss? Like, some something we should know about looming on the horizon? Oh, I haven't. We get together so informally that I couldn't even name one issue. Okay. But yeah. Cloverdale was talking to me about, you know, we would accept the people that are coming up and we've got housing for them. And... Cloverdale wants to feel included in the county and and because they're really on the outside they're really yeah, they feel like yeah. they're out they're almost in Mendocino and yeah. so they're starting this little art culture and they have restaurants and so they want to balance their economy and so they're saying we'll accept these people and then I said to them well you have to watch it you might have too many so we all have <laughs> to sort of balance well we'll watch and that's that. hard yeah. it's really when you have the outside influences of Google Intel Facebook you know well, let's ways, come back to that. Yeah. It's, we'll come back in a it's second. It's hard. Yeah. Deborah Fudge, Vice Mayor of the Town of Windsor. Uh, we'll be right back in 707. And we're back with Deborah Fudge. She's the Vice Mayor of Windsor, the Town of. And we're talking about all the gentrification and all the issues that go into living in Sonoma County these days. When did you come to Sonoma County? I came to Sonoma County in 1989. Um, I was working. It was peaking. It was peaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. There were a thousand homes a year being built in Windsor then, wow. and I moved to Santa Rosa first, and then Windsor, because I could afford a little farmhouse in Windsor. But yeah. I came up here because my grandmother lived in Sonoma, 
my mom, she moved there in 1945. Oh, wow. She lived across the street. She built a little flat top house, she and my grandfather, across the street from Chuck Williams of Williams of Sonoma. Oh, my God. Before he started his little shop. Right. And my mom knew him. She was 16, and she thought he was cute. That's great. <laughs> he wouldn't have been interested in her. Yeah, they, they rebuilt the original on, they did. on Broadway. That's great. Oh, yeah. wow. So my grandmother was living alone. My grandfather died in the 70s, and she was living alone. And then mm -hmm. I got a transfer from PG&E from... San Jose, which I, I couldn't stand to live there. I'd lived there before and it changed and I, I needed to leave. So I got transferred to Santa Rosa and I stayed. And then yeah. I was the closest one to my grandmother, so I can drive Highway 12. Right. Almost blindfolded, I went and took care of her and had yeah. to pick her up and drive her to, Winds to Windsor, to um, Santa Rosa to go to Penny's to buy her clothes because Sonoma gentrified like that. Right. Sonoma before Healdsburg started changing and she said oh, I can't buy clothes here I, and she couldn't read the Sears catalog anymore so I'd go pick <laughs> her up, drive her to... <laughs> So that's that's the grandma's generation. What about your parents' generation? What do they do? Where are they from? There, um, then I, I was raised in Santa Cruz, first yeah. in the Silicon Valley, and then my parents divorced, and they all ended up in Santa Cruz. Yeah. So I was a beach kid. That's I worked great. at the boardwalk. <laughs> I was an elf at Santa's Village. I was a maid at Dream Inn. So awesome. <laughs> all my friends and I were had a lot of fun working together in all those jobs. And my parents are all still there. Wow, that's They're great. in their 80s, and, and they moved from... You know, they both lived. My dad lived on Loma Prieta, actually really close to where the fire is right now. Yeah. And so he sold the house in May and moved to an assisted living. And so we're in touch with the people up there and they're safe. That's but good. the fire yeah. got close. And then my mom and stepdad moved to an apartment, a condo in downtown Santa Cruz at the top of the Pacific Avenue. So you see, you see neighborhoods change and cycle and all that. Yeah. Did you know that you were going to go into government? Uh, no, like, I was the least likely person in my family or even in my whole high school that could that could do this. What I, were you thinking about becoming when you were growing up? A veterinarian. Really? <laughs> I was going to be a veterinarian. I, I think government dealing with the kind of zoo that that could be. And yeah. A veterinarian. Yeah. Triaging yeah. animals. That's well, not. Yeah. I was like the third shyest person in my high school, and I couldn't speak in front of a microphone. And when I moved to Windsor, I was there four years, kind of quiet, didn't really know anybody. And there was an ad in the water bill, who wants to be a planning commissioner? Well, I'd gone to school for city planning. I was a state planner for Jerry Brown in his first administration. Oh, wow. Where, where'd you go to school? At UC Davis. Okay, right on. Yeah. And that's why I was going to be a veterinarian. But right. I was with all the pre-med kids, and so I was getting C's when they were getting A's. And I said, <laughs> I'm not going to make it. So I started taking planning classes. And... I knew I liked them because I started reading the homework ahead and getting A's. Yeah, that's with, a good sign. Yeah, yeah, so I thought, I like this planning. So then I got a job at the state. Then Duke Majin was elected, so I lost that job. And then I ended up at PG&E doing energy conservation work and customer service. And Right then, when that was beginning to happen, really, yeah. too. That's so I was great. in the forefront of all that. Yeah. So I kind of, once you're at PG&E or a big company like that and you stay more than five or ten years, you're locked in, really, until you get through until you can be eligible for a retirement income at some point. Yeah. So I stayed, but I missed my city planning. So I got on the Windsor Planning Commission. That's great. In the very beginning, I was there two years after we were incorporated and started um, planning the town differently with other people who who understood planning and wanted to do that and to build a downtown. You're probably one of the few people on a planning commission with a planning background. I was. Yeah. There was there were two other urban designers and then me and then the uh, the other there was another person who really got it. When you would talk to her, she would get it. Right. So they asked me to run for council after I was there for two years and I ran for council and won and that changed the whole dynamic of Windsor. I became the third person majority for the first time in Windsor's council history short history. Yeah. And then we set out to try to build the downtown and we purposefully set out and laid out where the town green would go and did all that before the developer came, but we That's did great. it step by step. It was fun. What was it about you, you think, that uh, brought people to the conclusion that you should be a city council person? Um, they liked it. Windsor was all about growth then, like it is now. Yeah. We've had kind of a quiet 15 years, but people were worried about growth. They didn't want suburban sprawl anymore. I didn't support that because that's where I came from in the right. Silicon Valley. You know, all the cities that run together, there were no, there still are. There's no. You can't tell. Yeah. You can't tell one city yeah. from the next. Except it gets really nice when you go from Redwood City to Atherton. That's, <laughs> all, that's all I've ever noticed. Yeah. Well, yeah. I lived in Redwood City, and so, yeah, well, there's a rough spot in there. But <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I've lived around that whole area. But um, so it was just my, I think my planning background and the fact that the people that were trying to change Windsor, I got along with them really well, and so they helped me run. Do you think, were you sort of 
part of the new arrivals of that sort of class of Windsor, you know, like the class of 93 or whatever. I think so. Yeah, and so you came with a different vision. Yeah, I did. And, and aligned with a lot of people. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Windsor, before 1992, was part of the county, and so they oh, were right, putting right. a lot of houses there. And we had, you know, 1,000 homes a year. We had one Rayleigh's, no high school. And if you wanted to go to the grocery store, I remember going there at 10 o'clock at night because there wouldn't be a line. Right. And that was before you had an iPhone and you could keep yourself busy, you know, texting right. or something. We'd just stand there in the line and... I said, I don't like this. This is what I moved away from. But I didn't buy a tract house there. I bought a little 1934 farmhouse that's, that's in town yeah. because I could afford it. Yeah. It was 150000 so oh, with a down payment from my grandfather, I could get that thing. That's really great. Yeah. Right. And you still own that? I still own it. I fixed it up. Yeah. And, and now it's a million, too. No, not quite. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the Once fours. Once you get done with your gentrification plan, it will be. I see your <laughs> evil plot. All right. It's on the fours. Nobody wants my house. <laughs> But, you know, why not a vineyard? Why haven't you planted a vineyard yet? I have one grapevine. Okay. I have and lots of I have three oak trees and yeah, that sounds great. A little garden. Speaking of wine country and vineyards and stuff like that, is that do you feel Windsor's been touched by that the way that Healdsburg has? I mean, Healdsburg's embraced that as an identity. Yeah. Like that's what Healdsburg is now. It's sort of a wine country vacation spot. Sonoma certainly. Um, Santa Rosa's pretending it is. Uh, Rona Park. Rona Park. Well, <laughs> I won't say. <laughs> yeah. My friends are on the council. I can't say. I don't even know. What they have the there? Welcome Center for, they're the gateway to Sonoma County. And then Petaluma says, what about me? And We asked Sonoma <laughs> Park, we asked for the, uh, actually the Vice Mayor of Rona Park to come. And they sent a tape recorder with a, with a message pre-taped. And we just put it here and did the, it was really awkward. Really? No. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. There's something sort of sanitized and synthesized about Rona Park to me. But, uh, but wine country in Windsor. Is it a thing, or are you kind of pushing it away? No, we're embracing it, yeah. but not as much as Healdsburg. So the one thing Healdsburg did that sort of changed was, at one point, they had 16 tasting rooms in their downtown. Really? We have two. Oh, geez. Wow. You know, and we three is good, you know, and, and we don't want to go past that because then you've you've kind of gone into the tourism realm. Yeah. So, um, so with, with but we, we embrace it. We, we have a lot of, we have two little wineries. Dumal is a really good one. We right. have two, and... Um, and there's a beer culture emerging there in is. Windsor, as I understand. Yeah, there is. I think that's a cool way to differentiate yourself in the middle of wine country. It's just you know what we have that's kind of cool? Yeah. We have an artisan alley, and it's really near where Russian River Brew Pub is going to be. They happen to locate near there, but it's we have a lot of, um, we have Tilted Shed Cider. We have Florian's, St. Florian's. Right, we the have, fireman. Um, got, yeah. The Sonoma Brothers Distillery. So little tiny spirits companies with three or four people in them. And we, they're all located together. So they asked, could we form an artisan alley and call ourselves the... the so you have a special district now, the artisan yeah. alley? I was going to call it a booze district, but that's no, not really good. good. <laughs> artisan alley. Artisan and and it turns out that Russian River is going to be near there. So we just made, we said, we'll make this circle bigger if you come here. And that's sort of a not wine, it's everything else. Yeah. Is there an incentive for them to do that? I mean, do you, do you guys give them a, like a break or a permit kind of situation? Um, no, they started um, it's just branding locating next, yeah. to them, to, next to each other. So, but, but now we're branding them. We have yeah. a new economic development website. And we have them on uh, our economic flyer on our new website as well, and, and we highlight them. I think it's a great So they'll idea. become more famous, yeah. Very cool. We're talking with Deborah Fudge. She, she's the vice mayor of the town of Windsor. We'll be right back. And we're back. It's 7 of 7. I'm Daedalus Howell. We're talking with Deborah Fudge. She's the vice mayor of the town of Windsor. Where is Windsor in relationship to the county? Not geographically, but psychographically. How does it see itself? It's we new. we see ourselves as leaders, and we're innovators, and you we're think really. The county sees you that way. <laughs> no, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you guys are like the the infant of Sonoma County in terms of like yeah. your yeah. I mean, you're, you're the last one in, right? We're the last one in. Yeah. But we've done some really innovative things that other people haven't done, and so we're becoming sort of the jewel of Sonoma County. We're advertising ourselves that way. Mm -hmm. We were the first city to sign up for Sonoma Clean Power. Mm -hmm. We were the first city in Northern California to have recycled water front and backyards in a big subdivision. We're still the only one. We started another water conservation program, Pay As You Save, first one in California. So we we don't we didn't start out to be first, but now we look for first. Right. What else can we do first? And that's interesting. You, we have the best streets in Sonoma County. Yeah, that's, and that that's was, totally true. Actually. That was yeah, totally, yeah. We, yeah, we didn't. Yeah. And we, we're the safest as well. Yeah. So how do we maintain all that? That's what we need to do. But we're really proud of, of who we are and where we've come from. I love this idea that you guys actively seek out seek out trying to be first at stuff. Mm -hmm. That, that we do includes now. the experience. Yeah. What did you do before? 
Well, we just did, you know, we followed some of our ethics, you know, we need to save water, can we do this? And we would go out and try to do something. But when we say we're first, I get other cities, you know, you talked about my friends. Yeah. So Roanoke Park was talking about, we have green bike lanes. I said, well, we're repainting ours. We are, we've already had them, they're on their second coat of paint. Right. So we sort of tease each other. And <laughs> Roanoke Park did something the other day, we're first. I said, okay, you're first on that. Right. Get, but get, it, the competition's yeah. kind of good because hopefully it raises the bar for all of us. Does, I mean, does, do the cities really do, I mean, it sounds jocular and fun and collegiate, but do, do you guys actually compete? I mean, like for money from the county, for example, are there these um, situations where you have to like fight for funding? Sometimes for road funding mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. Yeah. But not, not a lot. Mostly we're competing with the state and, and right now I'm on the smart board and we're competing um, for transportation money statewide and we want it for the smart train and so maybe another city would go and try to get that money for something else transportation related got it so we kind of compete a little but mostly sometimes there's a little there's some little turf wars there was one recently but otherwise we've with tried who? it with who? Uh, between smart and uh, <laughs> the Sonoma County Transportation Authority nice okay. we had a little dust up over 15 million dollars and they ended up getting it, and that's fine, and we acquiesced, but um, the 50 million bucks. it ends up yeah. friendly. You yeah. know, we, everybody shook hands in the end, and they got the money, but of course, yeah. we get promises for, from, for them to help us get more money in the future. And you swore revenge, of course. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. We're all friends. We can't do that. <laughs> the smart train stops right now in Petaluma, so far as I know. I don't think it's going past that. No, it goes to Oh. Well, I mean, I, in terms of where it is right now, because it's not all the way to Larkspur yet. Uh, 2018, I think that's the goal right. for that. It stops in downtown San Rafael. Uh, thank you. Okay, good. I was like, when you said Petaluma, I said. No, no, because <laughs> my, my field division is okay. narrow. But yeah, so, okay. so stops in San Rafael, goes all the way up to where are we now, Santa Rosa? We're at the Sonoma County Airport. Oh, so, so you're so really close now. We're getting close. We're 3.1 miles from Windsor. Wow, so, so when, it's when, close. when does it kick in for Windsor? We don't know. We're going after funding. We're hoping two years. Okay. And we, we're going after three grants. Two are still in play. One may have fallen out, but we applied for a new one this week that would, that would get a lot of the pre-work done in Windsor, the second tracks, the gauntlet tracks, the quad gates that go down, the signals, the things right. that are the most expensive, and then just it's just a matter of the track, which is really quick. And sometimes they're pre-existent, like they were in Petaluma. Well, track. they are, but we, we take them all out. We rip them out and put new ones down. Smart. Those are all new tracks. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you're logically then going to get the smart train before Cloverdale. Yes. Right? And we're going to go one city at a time, Windsor, then Healdsburg, then Cloverdale. So let me try something on you. This is a scenario, and uh, it's kind of predicated on some things we talked about a little earlier. Um, a Google moves into um, Nevada, right? We know the train goes there now. Right. We know that housing in Sonoma County can be prohibitive to uh, native Sonoma Countyans, right? But to somebody with a Google type salary, it may be advantageous to live a little further from uh, the center, the epicenter of Marin uh, and where Google might be. Again, this is just postulating. Uh, what does that do to Windsor if the train gets there first and Windsor is the furthest reach in theoretically the least expensive housing Right when I can get on the train and take you know take a ride to San Rafael and do my 180k job, you know double income, no kids or whatever. And yeah. What does that do to the housing in Windsor, and and, and how how do you address that? You know what the the fact that Google might come to Marin is new information to me. I learned that maybe two weeks ago. Maybe I was behind the eight ball, but it's not official. It's just uh, something that people have been talking. They're about. talking about yeah. it. I think it's likely. And, yeah. You know, Fireman's Fun left. There's a big building there. There's another big building, and they're talking. It would probably it would probably raise house values, and and Windsor's also but looking. And is it is that not a good thing for the people? Who it's own a good houses? thing if you live there. It's not a good thing if you're trying to live there. Right. You know. So that's we don't want to price people out. There was an article in the paper this week that teachers what can only afford 0.5 percent of the houses for sale right now in Sonoma right. County. So we need to figure that out. We need to provide different kind of housing that is smaller by design. So so let me try this on you. Um, ben Stone from the EDB comes to you and says. We've got this great lead. Google wants to move somewhere in Sonoma County, and we think there's uh, some space, perhaps, in Windsor. What do you do? We'd what do you do when Google wants to come to Windsor? I don't know how you say no. Right? Yeah, it's, it would be hard to say no. One thing that we've been talking about in Windsor, it's not that many people, but we, we were also talking about estate homes. We only have 15 or 20 homes that are you would call estate homes. The right. rest are tract homes. So we were trying to figure out on the edges of our town as we do our, next, our planning for the next 20 years, mm -hmm. where could we put some estate homes? Because you want a few wealthy people in your community. We really don't have very many that help finance 
you know, a lot of the things that you want done. They sponsor events. Right. You know, their property taxes help. Right, so you right want a schools, few, yeah. you know, to balance. Mm -hmm. But you don't want your whole town to be taken over. So we'll have to, we would have to think about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we have room for Google. So. <laughs> We're just, we're lucky but, to have... But do you guys court that kind of... Uh... Not that. We don't, we're not courting that okay. those companies that are that big. Who are you courting? Well, we courted the Russian River Brew, Co Brew is, Company. That, that's a coup. That's Yeah, that's a there. coup. And yeah. because um, we've got another, a Holiday Inn um, going in, a, we already have two other hotels, maybe a boutique hotel that's being considered. Yeah. But, you know, that's a little bit of tourism. And then they're a homegrown company. We want people that are from Sonoma County that are operating businesses to be able to stay here. We're not courting the big giant corporations yeah. and, and wine related we're actually going after wine related businesses too that's great so we kind of have a picture of what Windsor might be in the next 10 20 years what are you going to do the next 10 or 20 years what's, <laughs> what's your plan that's a good plan I didn't think I'd run for council this time this would be my sixth term coming up but wow. you know what it's, it's the planning that keeps me going and and finishing the downtown and working on a really cool glass pavilion and a boutique hotel and building a two-story library and redoing right. our town hall, you know, that kind of thing. Also, making sure that people like me stay involved who want to keep growth where it is and not go beyond our existing boundaries. And yeah. so um, I mean, didn't think, I thought I would stop now, and now I'm going four more years. So I you just, have an obvious passion for it. I do. When do you know, when do you know that, that the job is done? Like when they put your name on a, on a, on a town I'll building? Oh, no. Yeah. You know, it's just you know, and then and, and maybe if, you get, if you've done something where you get a lot of negative feedback, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't yet. So <laughs> I think Wait till the show comes out. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, then I'm finished. No, it happens to be every week. Don't worry about it. And <laughs> I, I can't, I want to stay on the smart board. And when that train gets running, I, I, I'm going to sit on that train and go back and forth. I'm going to go broke because you know what? The smart board, we don't get free passes. Right. We have to pay really? for every single ride, but I'm going to ride that thing and I want people's input and I want to see their happy faces that at least it's a start and we're doing something to get people out of their cars and, and so, sort of all of the environmental ethic and Greenhouse gas reduction and smart planning is what keeps me going. I love it. When I don't they, know what I'll do in four years. Well, and when they have the wine car, uh, you and me, I'll meet you there. Right? Okay. <laughs> we are going to have wine. Hell yeah. Let's we do are. it. Right. Yeah. Deborah Fudge, Vice Mayor of the Town of Windsor, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. This Come was back. fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> cool. There you go.